Hello, beautiful seekers, and welcome to July 2020. This is a powerful month. Um, it is a powerful month of clarity, of honesty, of integrity, of intention setting, of a changing landscape. You know, this is a real. This is really a month of like big changing landscapes. And I know, pretty much all of this year has been one giant changing landscape. And a lot has been coming to the surface, a lot of honesty, a lot of integrity, a lot of truth, right? And it's been uncomfortable at times and it's been powerful at times. And Virgos, I have to tell you, this month is very powerful for you all. It's an interesting time of year because we start the month off obviously in Cancer energy, which is very much about your community, your friendships, you know, the way you connect with others. And then we dip into Leo season on the 22nd and that's when we start to get into this prep season. You know, the month before Virgo season begins is a time of deep integration, of deep spiritual understanding, of deep, you know, kind of just going behind the scenes. You know, it's not always about the surface story. It's often, you know, this is a time where you may be finding you're looking over things, you're reassessing things. In fact, the message I had for Virgos this month was that we're going into the season of mystery and ascension for you all. And as this month kind of goes through Cancer, which is already a very mysterious, loving, nurturing, watery energy, and then into your 12th house, the sign right before yours, this is this is deep, powerful energy for you to work with. Um, and so just keep that in mind. You can really utilize this month and this intense energy and even the collective process to understand yourself better and to take that wisdom and to take that seeing, whatever you're seeing, whatever you're intaking, and transmute it into what you want the rest of this year to be. Because that's the other thing. This time is when you can set an intention about what you want the second half of this year to look like and to really implement, you know, to see how much you have changed just in the last few months and to really be clear, really, really clear on what it is you're going to be putting into action this next six months. Um, there may be a part of you that feels like you want to hide or retract, but there's another part of you that knows that it's a time for clearly choosing to put your foot on the path and really be here in this process, right? So let's talk through this month. Let's see what the cards have to say. Being a Virgo moon, I'm riding this wave with you all. You better believe. So, okay, so this month is really powerful for many reasons, including the fact that Saturn is going to meet Capricorn again on July 1st. So he's been going retrograde. We've just had the first taste of Saturn and Aquarius. Saturn will be coming back to Aquarius in December. But for the next five months or so, we are going to be doing this review. A Capricorn is an interesting relationship to you being a fellow Earth sign. This is about your heart chakra and about how you want your heart chakra to be free or restricted, how discipline and structure and consistency can be a really great tool, but also where it stifles you, where it stops you from just going for it and improving and using your mutable energy to play and see what will happen. So there's gonna be a bit of a review going on there. There's also a full moon in Capricorn with a partial lunar eclipse on July 5th. And that's these Capricorn energies are really strong. We also have Jupiter and Pluto very close together at the beginning of the month in Capricorn. So all this Capricorn energy that we're still <laughs> working with until the end of 2020, is going to be a review time for you as far as where you feel you feel captive within yourself, where you help feel held back, where you feel like you keep envisioning where it is you want to go, but then you kind of pull back. This is a really powerful time to review that. Um, and you, I think you may be feeling some of that. Chiron also goes retrograde in your eighth house. It's in Aries. Um, your relationship to Aries is very powerful. This is about transformation and Chiron retrograde is going to be asking you to accept yourself more deeply, accept, you know, the imperfection, the fact that, you know, you may have things you want to create or add to the world or try and do, and it's not going to be perfect all the time. And that is okay. So there's a deep incorporation going on there as well. We have a new moon in Cancer at the end of Cancer season on, let's see here, July 20th, very last degrees of Cancer there. Uh, and then we, of course, move into 
Leo season, which is extremely powerful for you. This is the hidden house. This is the house of ascension. This is the spiritual space. So a great time starting at the end of July to really get connected in. Knight of Cups wanted to come out. Yeah, this is just, this is a powerful month. You know, the message that came through for me. Ten of Wands, yes. There's a lot of um, ten energy working through July as well. Um, these, we had an eclipse in Cancer and now we're having this eclipse in Capricorn on July 5th. It's really closing out a learning cycle that we've been working with for two years. So maybe even a little bit more. And so there is there is a culmination. There is a clarity coming in. King of Swords, love it. That I think you can kind of feel at a really visceral level that it's not that there wasn't value in the last few years. In fact, there's been deep value and, and a lot of beauty, justice. But there's also the sense that whatever has been worked on, whatever we were working on, whatever we were focused on has now completed. And there's something else. Eight of Swords, there's that Chiron retrograde energy. And also, don't forget that Mercury retrograde is the, uh, going on until July 12th. It'll go direct in Cancer. So there is some reflecting going on. Three of Swords, okay, yep. Um, and there's some transformational energy going on there. And the moon. Okay, don't let those those last three cards get you down. You know I got you. You know that I'm all about <laughs> the deep work of sitting with ourselves and where we, where we hurt ourselves. So don't worry. It's not bad news, but it is deep and it is spiritual. And it is this important thing of, you know, as we go back to Capricorn energy, as we're reviewing this energy one more time, where we have felt we aren't worthy is coming up big time in July and where we feel we haven't been empowered enough to make big change in the world and to really help others and to help ourselves and to be creative is all coming up in July. So that's happening on a personal level as well as collective. Uh, the themes of power and control um, that are needing to be healed by our mothering and our inner child are coming up big time at this time. So, okay, right off the bat, we have a beautiful messenger coming in here. The Knight of Cups. This guy is the romantic of the tarot deck. This guy is all about the beautiful things, you know, the things we believe in. Um, you know, recently I've been somebody who always loves to draw, but it kind of fell away for many years and giving myself the permission to just play and draw has been so beautiful. And I think Knight of Cups is that coming back to letting yourself enjoy the things you enjoy, letting yourself enjoy creating, letting yourselves enjoy falling in love or being, you know, whatever aspect of self. Now this can also bring in new, new people, new contacts, new romantic, creative, juicy, beautiful, good things. And there is positive energy here working with you when it comes to your heart chakra. So there is something coming in here and yes, Ten of Wands shows up, but not surprised with Virgo, because as we all know, you know, Virgo, you guys like to take charge. You like to get it done yourself. You want to know it's done well. And Ten of Wands really represents the person who takes it on their own shoulders and says, I can do this. I can do this. I don't need help. But tens always invite us to a conclusion of something, something that is no longer serving us to do in the same way. So this is a closeout energy that's saying, you got to let go a little bit, right? Perfection isn't always in the going it alone and controlling it. It's about letting go a little bit, right? And and that's actually really interesting because King of Swords justice here. These these are all of the same family. They got their their clear-cut swords here. These are truth bringers, right? These are honesty bringers. Uh, another interesting thing this month, Mercury's going direct, which always helps our mental clarity. <laughs> Venus will have gone direct in June already. And Neptune is retrograde. And Neptune retrograde helps us see things clearly for what they are. So there's a lot of honesty and integrity going on in July. And, you know, eclipses can help us see more clearly as well. And they can help us shed a skin. They can help us let go a little bit. So Virgos, you know something is right for you. You know something that needs to to move forward on, right? These are cards of balance, of harmony, of partnership, of communication, of forthright clarity. Um, these are cards of commitment as well. 
These are cards of boundaries. These are cards of clarity and answers coming in when they need to come in. So there is something that you already know. You know, it's been maybe bubbling or culminating in the background for a little while. It's something that you know is for you, is for you to activate, address, show up to the table. Now this could be saying yes to a relationship. This can be saying yes to a job. This can be saying yes to a shift in scenery. This can be also closing out a project, a friendship, a creative venture, a scheduling thing that's not working for you anymore. It can be both at the same time. It is tied to the dream, right? To the romantic beauty believing part of yourself. So that's important. But there is kind of this sense that <laughs> there's no such thing as not knowing during this month for Virgos. You know how like sometimes you want to just write on a sheet of paper why life as it is now works just fine. Everything's in support of me. I have everything I need. Why do I need to be different than I am? Why do I need to want to do things differently? Why do I need to want to change things in these ways? You know, why do I need to do that? And you can still feel your soul saying, but you know that you want to do this. I think this is one of those months where you may just be feeling that culmination of emotions about something sometimes, and there's no not knowing it, right? And I think that's where this Eight of Swords, Three of Swords is coming in, and, and even the moon here as well. Uh, you know, these, these guys, our little friends here, these are... Yeah, these are our mental processes, right? That's so what's interesting about sword suit is that they're about the way we use our words and our thoughts and our minds, you know, our conscious minds to construct story and where we hold ourselves in captivity, in prison, in scary stories, in, in self-limiting stories, in painful stories, um, and repeating those loops, right? And when we know something and we can't unknow it any longer and it's time to know it and it's time to fully embody it and embrace it. I think there's a point where we do sit here and we say, oh, I wish I could not know this. I wish I could hold myself back, right? Um, there's also just that, that theme that came up for me of, you know, where maybe you felt like you weren't allowed to move forward, where you feel like you're supposed to stay the same, and that being where your value comes from, and feeling like you're not allowed to go for what's next, right? That voice is really represented in these cards, and it may show up, right? That voice that's saying, oh, you're not allowed, no, you're not allowed, could, definitely shows up when we know something clearly, and we're about to take a big step. Now, I think July is a beautiful month to just witness all of that happening within you. You may be making shifts and changes, you know, especially as Mercury goes direct, though there will be a post shadow phase the rest of the month. Keep that in mind. And as we get out of eclipse season and as we start to kind of come out of a very, very powerful three months, there, there is forward motion, but there's also this sense of really understanding and seeing, and that's where the moon comes in here. You know, this is an emotional process, these, these two right here. This is about where maybe we have felt heartbreak or disappointment, where we feel we should hold ourselves back, where we want to get emotionally honest with ourselves and clear the air. This is also asking you to trust your intuition and don't get lost in the murk and the uncertainty. You know, don't let yourself get pulled into overanalyzing and overthinking. Allow your that deep feeling, that deep knowing to give you the answers you already know. If we were to sit down and do a talk, a session together, it would be one of those things where you say, I'm not sure, I think I kind of know, but I'm not sure. You would proceed to tell me exactly what it is that your heart desires, that you're wanting to see clarity on, that you're wanting to see movement on, and exactly how you envision that happening for you. And for some reason, you may not be letting yourself fully hear that within, right? So go ahead and write it down, feel it out. I highly recommend that this month. This is a deep month of truth, so... <laughs> And like I said, with the way that the energy is working here, kind of think about how you want to 
be honesty, honest and in integrity the next six months as we get through these last lessons with Capricorn because that it is about authoritarianism, it is about suppression and things like that, some heavier energies and how we want to not really relive any of these cycles again and how we want to move forward from them. So this is an important month to be really strong and clear about that. Um, you can find me on Patreon where we're going to be doing so much more extra support. It's a really wonderful way to help me um, keep creating all of this beautiful stuff. But also I offer so much over there. Worksheets, weekly discussions. Um, we go deep on transits. I'm really active in the comments section over there. It's a great way to connect with me. So I would love to see you over on Patreon. It would mean the world to me. We have such an amazing, beautiful, connected community over there. You can also find me on Instagram and on my website at Sarah Verba. And you can find Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry on her Etsy shop. I will see you all so soon. Go ahead and subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out and helps me be present here in this space uh, and continue to do the work that I do. So I would love that and appreciate that so much. Have a beautiful July. Take such good care of yourselves, my Virgo family. And I will see you so soon.